director of rugby for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and our captain, real question. Yeah, uh, to be honest, a bit stumped um, because I think they had, they had a similar experience in the second half. I'll explain what I mean now, but just that the way they kept the ball, um, and we, I could see why, because we were a transition team, but when we turned the ball over, we were so tired from this defending. I think we were really good, physically we were amazing. We, we smashed them in double, smashed them in double, they worked the ball to the edge, we have to work backwards, get off the line. When we got the ball, we just hacked it away or kicked it out. It, it was a lesson for us. I didn't have a plan, is the truth. We tweaked something on the fence at half time, but it was a lesson for us, it was tough. Yeah, you know, I think what, what, what gave us hope was that physically we, you know, I think we doubled tackles and that we were great. They just found that little space on the edge, we have to retreat, we were just gone there. Eh? It was tough, 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 tough. I mean, a, I mean, if you look at the second half, I mean, that ability to kind of grind it out. Like yeah, I think, I think, Steve, the, the first half, it's actually a coach, I was just talking to their coach now, they're a very nice bunch. They're saying, they say, you know, first half, we get the ball, we end up, we end up 22, we turn it over. We kick it out or hack it down. In the second half, it was exactly the same for them. We were but a different style of rugby. Yeah, we enter, we cough at the ball, which is frustrating, five minutes from their line. They can't then start their phase play from there. They've got to kick it out, which creates another transition situation. So that we sort of fed their phase play in the first half, and they fed our sort of transition play in the second half. Really weird a game of rugby. And they, there's no solution. I don't know the solution either. If you went on another 10 minutes, you would probably go another throw. Yeah, but I think they... Ulster were outstanding and that, but the truth is, we butchered, you know, Bulls probably what, three or four tries we butchered. Last week, five or six, well, it's at least six last week. They probably similar, if not a higher number. You know, we, we had, from minute 50 onwards, we were entering. You know, it's just, I mean, yeah, poor Evan for all his good work. Three balls, five minutes from the line, less than five, a meter from the line. Tough. Well, would you say that, I from the end of the week, and everything and just going today will be very very helpful for next week obviously a different size creature that's coming out you know um but very helpful yeah i i, I the second half I, didn't, I know what you mean by grinding up we got off the canvas and we slugged it and we sort of that, yeah that but at least we were playing ours to that transition we we're playing stormers rugby in the second half it's frustrating to leave so many tries out there but it's, it's going to be great preparation that at first I mean, Moon was on the field, you could maybe talk to it, but that first 20 minutes, tough, eh? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a completely different test to, to Edinburgh. Um, and like you said, it's great, a great preparation for next week. Also, also had a great game. I think they put us under a lot of pressure that first half. And also for, for, for us as a team, I think we showed great balls. And I, and I think uh, it was great character uh, for us to get that win against a quality Ulster side. Fantastic, really. I'm really, I'm really chuffed. But now, is it a case of him um, disturbing the rhythm of the team? You know, like last week he had good rhythm, this week he struggled to get going. I just think they, they tested us completely different to, to any other side. Uh, I, I, we knew it was coming, the, the Irish uh, side, and you know, they, they got co continuity, uh, the multi, multi phase uh, side. And I think that's what they did in the first half, kept the ball really well. Um, made us, made us, made us tackle non-stop and I, I think that, like Dabba said, it did drain a bit of energy and we couldn't really get into our transitions um, but it really showed some great cuts towards the end and the second half, it was, I think it was a game of two halves. I wouldn't have liked to bought a ticket in, the, <laughs> in that stand, I went to the South stand, you yeah. saw nothing today. The party stand. <laughs> yeah, the party stand. <laughs> yeah. Much as um, you got Two different games um, last week, this week. What's your job now? More difficult? I would say it's a challenge. Yeah, we've got to analyze how, that, how the center combination worked. Loose forwards. Yeah. Um, well, was, only one of the big tight ends can start. But I think they'll be happy with the way to the cards are. But that is a problem, um, putting all those guys in. So. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a chicken and egg situation. Do you choose to stop La Rochelle, uh, your most physical guys, or do you think we're going to break them open with our X factor, which might require something else? You know, so it's, it's, it's a very tricky one. So it's going to be a test match next week. It's going to be an incredible game of rugby. They're, they're the, I would suggest the biggest rugby team in the world 
there were a lot of test teams. Uh, they were in world rugby rankings. They'd be in the, in the top 10 without any stress. So it's going to be a great occasion. And yeah, uh, looking forward to it very, very much. Oh, yeah. Enjoy Enjoy the, 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 the <laughs> 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 he's a good player, isn't he? Uh, that's, he's not chosen for that. I was going to be a 20 cap sprint block. I was just a word on, on the player of the match, Will Van Heeren. Every week he just seems to get better and better all the time. Just keeps growing. That must be one of the positives for you, and especially yeah. also mine. You can know as well. Yeah, we, look, we're spoiled for choice there. It's one of the tough things, you know, youngster like Connor Evans on in the 23, and we are probably deservedly not in the 23, but they, uh, Ruben is he's so old school. Like, he's one of the guys who wants to win every game. It's like a it's an incredibly competitive guy in a nice way. Just wants the team to win, and uh, that's how he plays. I mean, his work rate is extraordinary. Yeah, yeah he's a really nice look. We're really blessed with those, these, the three locks that are in our team today. Oh, yeah, better than the scars, dude. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought there was one to in the start of the second half where Brocky was, we, we had them really in the march. And Brocky, they accused Brocky of walking around, you know. He's not fit enough, you know. <laughs> 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 He's, uh, uh, I thought that was a tough call, and I thought a couple of calls. But, you know, yeah, look, they were, good, they were a good front row. I mean, they got Stephen Kitts off, and they Rob Herring's a 30 odd, 30 odd test, Ireland International, uh, Tom O'Toole. That's, that's, a good, that's a good front row. Um, well, I said not happy. I think we could have got one or two rewards better, but no. What do you? Hundred percent. I just think we didn't get the reward that we wanted. Um, I think it was a good scrum scrummaging performance. Um, one or two calls didn't go away. Um, we spoke about it at half time. Um, but yeah, pleasing, pleasing um, scrummaging performance. Yeah, the kind of grip of the scrummaging performance. Yeah. If you know what I mean. It was like always. They had to kind of quickly yeah. pull out. Yeah. You know, so you guys were taking energy out of there. Yeah, I think that's our frustration. We felt we had the upper hand and we got what three penalties against us. So yeah. we thought that was a bit tough. But uh, yeah. I just want to go back to the first 40 minutes. Um, so to just say kind of a blanket statement, you know, you guys were put in those first 40 minutes. Is that just, you know, the way you see it with the, with the other things happening there that um, you yeah. I, 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 yeah, we. We spoke a lot about our double tackles, yeah, um, and I thought we delivered on that. I think where we were poor was um, just this defensive issue that we got a little bit tight, so we gave them the edges, and that and that really hurt us. So it will put and, and literally they didn't put us on the same pressure in the second half, but we dressed it at half time. But you know, if you've got eleven year forwards inside their sort of twelve or thirteen, 11, sorry, eleven year players. Is that there's going to be, and then the, 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 one of the edges, well, that edge is compromised, and they get that free run, and because you're sort of scrambling back, they can start stepping inside. It's exactly how we lost the final against Manchester last year. Whereas normally when they step inside, yeah, we're going forward. So we were a bit tight. We didn't open up enough for the forwards or falling. So a technical thing. I don't think we could say in the, fir in the, sec in the first half, our effort, like I said, we yeah. look at those dominant tackles. It wasn't like we weren't there physically, was it, Mourinho? Yeah. But just that, so you go dom off the line, off the line, get forward, go forward, and then they get a 20 meter run. So our pack's coming back, they have to go off the board and they can naturally get tighter. And that's, right. to me it was more well played by Ulster than really poor play by the yeah. Stormers. I, 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 think, I know we made, the poor play element probably came in you know, a couple of guys dropping three contestables, which to put us in a bit of pressure. Was this going to also like, uh, you felt a bit tight when we were sitting off the field? Like, the air? The air, yeah. yeah. Was, did that contribute to the ball being a bit? Greasy. Yeah, yeah I, I think it was actually a point that we brought up before before kickoff. It was very greasy, um, it was humid. Um, and I think that possibly contributed to the to, to the aerial battle. Um, but let's not take anything away from Ulster. Yeah. I think they put us under a lot of pressure. And for us to contain that and, and to actually get the win at the end is, is proper. Really. Double asking, were you happy with the breakdown? Were you cycling the ball? You guys couldn't really get that attack and rhythm going like you got last year. Oh, I think I, the, the truth, I, I don't know, that's my department, but I, I need to have another look. I thought we generated <laughs> some fastball, but uh, there was one or two moments we were inaccurate and it sort of popped out and that sort of thing. So, but I, I promise you, I'll, I'll be talking for the sake of a waste of data. I need to have a look at it properly. But I, I, uh, <laughs> 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 Coach, um, just uh, congratulations on your role as director of rugby. Just casting your eyes to the future, what would that entail in terms of not just in the, the 
the, the medium term, but for the future as well for the Stormers? Well, I think that uh, doesn't change anything really. I think, um, I think it's just about uh, sort of me being responsible for the rugby program in terms of the new ownership. I think you know, we'll have guys in charge of the pathways. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be a classic uh, or step back out and step into the office. I really want to stay close to the team, and that's my, that's my core job. I think, they, I think if, you, if you point, you know, if you don't do that, there's a danger that, that's, that the, storm, the environment can change. And I think we've got quite a nice environment at the moment, so I want to sort of take responsibility for that. But there are people I mean, some in this, um, who are going to help you know, with the, uh, the pathways, the player uh, welfare, the athletic performance. So my role probably, probably practically won't change. You know? I'm asking because I think you've mentioned in the past that you want to make the Stormers as one of those elite clubs in the world. Yeah. And when you talk about La Rochelle and you talk about the lenses of the yeah, sport, exactly. is that part of the aim of? 1,000%. We want to be at the top table of world rugby. You know, we've, you know, if you think where we are now, what are we, probably fourth or fifth still in the URC now. Um, we've had two finals. We've, we were in the group of death. I'm actually going to show them the, the thing on Tuesday where our odds of getting out of the group of death are one in 40. You know, and we've come out hosting a last 16 game. We want to be in the top table. You know, Crusade is hard because they're playing literally in a different pool, a different ocean now. But obviously they are one of the top clubs in the world. You know, Leinster, La Rochelle, Toulouse, we want to sit at that table. I don't know yeah, whether it's the top 10 or the top 5, but that's where we're going to go. And I think with our, the talent base here, the amazing people that support us, this stadium, an organization which is a definitely in a secure ground than it was a few weeks ago, I think an and a play base, you know, we're not going to, like, people think, well, I've said, you know, we're not going to go out, and Jan LaRue said this week, we're not going out and buy Galactic. If we just keep this team together, it's, it's, it's young, the, the more cohesion we get, uh, keep this team together. Let's go. We can get there. Uh, we, you know, we beat we beat La Rochelle at home this year. We uh, so we've got another group of death. We lie. We're gonna get a home playoff. I promise you, in some form in the URC, and that's that's we want to. Yeah, that's so we're not we don't. It's not a lofty pipe thing. Uh, URC champions, URC mm-hmm. finalists, gonna be there at the sharp end this year. Playing La Rochelle yeah, next week. Yeah, if the season finishes, we get knocked out next week. We won one against the best club team in the world for the season. Not the apocalypse now, you know. So no, that's definitely our goal. And I think that must be, I think it's the people of Cape Town. It's such a big club. Oh, sorry, I'll give you a lecture now. This is a big team. You know, it's not mine or Red Dyers or, or the players. Just in terms of support. And that, like I've just seen all those reasons I've said to you. That's what we should be. I mean, there's no reason why we can't, can't be there. And the Crusaders, I'm sure, have got the same player base. You know, Leinster's built a very well model. And we can learn from how they run it. But from a few public schools, we've got the people of Cape Town. And it's, it's extraordinary. So that's where we need to be here. No, the board could be a, a great board. That's a very really good board. Uh, that's where we probably needed that. They're not easy, <laughs> 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 but they wouldn't be such successful business people or CEOs of Lens if they were. Yeah, the old days of me fudging numbers and saying, "Please give me some this guy on you know, WhatsApp or something." I got it over. Um, yeah, but I think you know, they, Mick was at the helm of Leinster from when they came from relatively middle middle to what four? How many times champion of four. four four European Cups? It's massive expertise, you know, in every respect. You know, so I think it's useful. I think we must also actually no, let me not say it. Twenty-four thousand six hundred and two. Really? Fantastic! <laughs> yeah. oh, brilliant. I thought they were incredible. Yeah. I don't so know if someone would do that. Yeah, you can latch on to that. I mean, the, the IP wasn't what you wanted to be shot in, in that first half. Of them. They were never quiet. They were never quiet. Yeah. yeah, I think we gave them we gave them a different show tonight. I think any any rugby support, and not only them, can appreciate the the guts the guts shown tonight. And um, really, I'm. Probably just repeating myself, but I'm I'm extremely chuffed, and we're really grateful for the support. And hopefully, over the next couple of years, or next couple of weeks, uh, those numbers can increase. Um, I'm pretty sure they they really looking forward to next week. Yeah. I've got last one. Just on some line, you must be really happy. You're just coming back to form, nice. I mean, he's got that 31 minutes in Durban. He's got 40 minutes at Loftus. He got 65 last week today, 69. Although the caps are there, but I mean, he's coming back nice. You must be happy with that. Thrilled, absolutely thrilled. To have two locks like that, yeah, I said to leave Adriel, who's done so well in the last, it's amazing, his work rate, his leadership, 
I know that referee didn't appreciate the way he put the ref, kept the referee under, under pressure. No, extraordinary. Well, we know he's got this new thing. As soon as he stretches his calves, we know that. It's basically his signal to us to say. <laughs> no, but for the amount of rugby, he's a very limited amount of rugby. December, what's the, the injury against was that December 2023? Yeah. 22, sorry. 22, yeah. To come back so quickly, to get such a high level so quickly, extraordinary, yeah. Take a look at you after homecoming today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must felt weird for kids. It was in here, no. No, no, it wasn't here. Yeah, no. well, what was the interaction like with, um, with kids? Did you have a moment with him um, afterwards or so? I think yeah. Lepa said that Lepa yeah. was giving him. <laughs> <laughs> him we, we actually had a moment on the field. I, I, I carried the ball and he happened to tackle me and he actually complimented me. He said, Great carry. <laughs> and I said, thanks, Kitsi. And uh, I asked him, how are you feeling? And he said, he's, he's effed. <laughs> but it, 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 it's really special. Kitsi is a wonderful human being. And, I, and it just shows, like, uh, you know, he came to the change room and everyone was really fond of him. Um, and I think you will always have a very, very close um, attachment to each and every one. Who were the captains again? Yeah, it was because Brocky was also, it was Gaza. Amen. But he was, he's, he's the most competitive here you know, at half time. He was the, come on, get out. Get out. Yeah, so, we wouldn't have much choice. Robert, do you have something for Leon's confidence also? Do you, I mean, because you guys were piling on the pressure in the scrums. Um, so, so, do you have yeah. something for Leon? Yeah, yeah we, that's a, coach and Les, you know, often we don't back these guys. You know, we probably should have, the game was so tight, we probably should have taken Brocky off a bit before that. Brocky also did a theatrical lie down to say that it was uh, time to come off. But uh, another crap, but Brocky, but yeah, we, uh, we've had that same fault before with like Aquenzo's on the bench and we haven't put him on, you know, Leon, Leon didn't have a choice today. And the plan was originally, if we got away properly that game, we'd take Brocky off much earlier. You know, we got those two French Titans next week. You know, the, uh, you know, Leon gave us a lot of confidence for next week now. I think he's grown a lot, hasn't he? Yeah, he looks much better. Um, yeah. Just find one from my side. What would you, next week is La Rochelle, that's another. <laughs> Other, you know, what, what do you think you expect to meet him? Meet Larry Yeah, next week. I mean, oh, listen, it's, it's, you, you could kind of have some clever. We've got to be clever. Um, I don't want to speak about that. We, we, our plans, but you know, you can't let their forwards conserve energy. You can't, uh, the mall, you've got some clever ideas around the mall. Uh, you know, those French forwards are known for the way they park in the middle of the field to save energy. Um, we're going to have to ask them other questions to keep them moving. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it is a different sort of tactical plan next week. But we'll be up for it. I promise you, we're looking forward to it. And Norman's very excited. Yeah. Just my, just my final like yeah, that's my final question. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Are there any more questions? My final guys? question. Okay. You got your final one? Ah. <laughs> Go. Yeah.